Okay, uh, I can also get an efficiency reading with this unit. Um, I'm getting a reading uh, before dilution air. This dilution air would cool down my flue gases, which uh, <clears throat> would make it look like it's more efficient. That's why I'm reading my efficiency from up inside here. I'm getting a 76% efficient. Um, this is uh, combustion efficiency, and which is not the same as AFUE but it's a pretty good indicator of uh, where this heat is. Uh, i got a 538 degree stack temperature. Should get pretty close to the same reading in the hole right next to it. Uh, and I am right around 75, 76% efficient. Okay, one thing I want to point out on the, uh, the fan that we're going to be working on now is a couple things. Uh, one is uh, these belt driven fans need to be oiled usually uh, there's a little oil port up uh, on the uh, bearing uh, let me that little thing I just cleaned off there if you can see that and then there's also one on the back side so what we do is we put a few drops of 30 weight oil in there and that uh, lubricates our bearings we're going to pull this uh, whole fan assembly out and uh, we'll have to pull this motor off. One of the things we do when we put it back together is we have to set the tension of this fan belt. and We don't want it too tight. The rule of thumb is if from center to center of the pulleys we want about three quarters of an inch of uh, play right here for every foot distance between the pulleys. So this is a little over a foot so I want to see at least three quarters it, and it's set about where it should be set right now. The wider we go the more play we have right here. Okay so now we're going to pull this the uh, blower assembly out. Uh, we're going to take the motor off. We need to clean this stuff this gunk out of here so we'll we'll take the motor off uh, take it outside. Uh, we got a compressor out there and blow all this gunk out of here. Uh, oil the unit, um, 30 weight oil in the uh, oil ports, and uh, then we're going to also look up inside that the heat exchanger to make sure uh, we don't see any cracks up in there. One thing we want to make sure is the power shut off um, before we start messing with any of this stuff here. Okay, one of the things I want to check on my motor is for slack. I can have a little uh, linear movement, but uh, perpendicular to the shaft, I don't want any movement. And uh, so I have this thing's pretty tight right here. Um, so I think I. Um, and then also, um, I want to look for my ratings of my motor on here. Because I'm going to, when I hook this thing back up, I want to make sure that I'm not pulling too many amps. Okay, this is 5.1 amp um, is what I should be reading. It's a quarter horse, and I write all that down. If I get my belt too tight, or if for some reason I, my pulleys were the wrong size, um, I tend to um, run at a higher amperage, which will um, wear out my motor. It won't run efficient, it won't last very long. So when I put this back in, I'm going to check my amperage, make sure that I'm 5.1 or real close to 5.1 amps. Uh, the other thing is, is I want to look at the belt, look for cracks, um, any uh, problems with the belt. This belt looks pretty good. Doesn't have any cracks in it, doesn't look too war. Um, if I'm going to work on this in the future, it might be nice to know what uh, my belt size is, so I would record my belt. Um, I got a half inch here, and then I record all the way around and get the uh, circumference of my belt, and that way I know. Okay, I pulled the two screws out for this blower uh, assembly. Now I should be able to pull the whole uh, blower out and take a look at it.
So you can see here's the uh, pulley that the uh, uh, belt runs on. Here's where we oil it, right here. We'll just put um, a little bit of 30 weight oil in there. This side also has a place where we can oil this bearing. And uh, you can see it's not real, real dirty. There's some a little bit of stuff here, but this isn't real bad. Um, definitely see worse. We'll just clean this up a little bit. Got a little bit of stuff here. If it was real bad, um, we might take this to the car wash and use some hot soapy water and spray these fins and get all this dirt out of these fins. Um, it's not real bad, but uh, it also wouldn't hurt to clean it. Uh, the unit will run a little more efficient. Okay, now I can I can use a mirror, my flashlight. I got to make sure my mirror is clean, and I can get a view up into my heat exchanger and see and look for cracks and. Uh, Quite frankly, for me the easiest way is to climb in here and actually look up in at my heat exchanger. If I can fit in there and it's not too dirty for me, I'll look up in here. And this actually looks very clean. Okay, so I can use my uh, compressed air to never want to do this in the house. It'll make a total mess, but I can clean a lot of this fairly easily with compressed air. take the, the dirt off the fins. thing back in its rail nice part about this job is you get to stand on your head once in a while Okay, so um, I can feel the tension. I don't have it too tight. I got a, about three quarters, a little over three quarters of an inch of slack on here. And I'm about a little over a foot away. So um, I want to also, if I have adjustment side to side, which in this case I, I don't, I would make sure they're lined up. The pulleys are lined up straight in the line. 
All right, we'll go ahead and put a put our filter in um, at this point. Now that we have a bracket that should hold the filter in place and it's not completely dirty, it's not going to suck it up to the to the motor. And now we'll uh, go ahead and turn it on, and uh, we'll get our heat. Or uh, we'll measure the amp draw on our motor. And then right after that, we'll. Uh, get our heat rise across our furnace so I put it on AC amps and uh, I got my wire split right here and uh, the number we were looking at was 5.1 we're uh, just a hair over that so um, I think we have a really good smooth running motor right here and it's not pulling too many amps so that looks good we'll go ahead and put our cover back on so we get our true airflow because we were sucking a lot of air through there things sound a lot quieter now than they did earlier okay at five minutes we'll have steady state and uh that's when we get our uh, temperature rise. <laughs> we go ahead and watch it as it climbs up. Before it was cycling on high limit. And uh, now that we've uh, done all of our work, I'm pretty sure it's not gonna cycle on high limit anymore. Because we have good airflow, that filter was pretty plugged. We're going to have a tuned up furnace here. It's still climbing pretty high. It's a very hot running furnace. So basically about 80 and 190. So we have a pretty high heat rise here, 110 still. Um, so the next step is we go out and see if we have registers that are closed because uh, that is climbing pretty high okay we're at our five minute uh, heat rise uh, we were at 230 before and it's hanging right around 200 now, um, which is still fairly high. I mean, it's 200 over here, 80 over here. Uh, we have a 120 degree heat rise. 80 is as high as we want to see. Um, so this could use a little more airflow, but we did make a difference. We cut it down from 230. It was cycling on high limit, and now uh, it's not going to cycle on high limit anymore. It's able to get rid of all the heat that uh, it's creating out to the house. Uh, rather than uh, this thing getting real hot and shutting off. So uh, um, by changing the air filter, we also did open a register here and there that were closed to get the air flowing through here. Um, so basically, uh, we still got we got to plug this hole up, um, but our, uh, our, our uh, unit, this needs to be changed um, and uh, uh, need to have this fixed. Um, although, you know we did all this work there's not a safety issue with this however this thing is getting at an age where it's probably about time um, to change it out it's uh, 35 years old um, it's definitely on the uh, end of the life cycle it's 75 percent efficient um, if possible we could be putting in a 90 percenter um, but there is not a safety issue except for this flu needs to be fixed um, at this point in time we were able to fix the uh, gas pressure got rid of the co we don't have as high of a heat rise it's not cycling on high limit anymore so takes a little bit of work uh, but when it's all said and done uh, this thing's burning better and using less energy and heating the house better than it was before we got here
Well, that's it for another episode of WXTV. A special thanks to Mike for sharing all of his knowledge about heating systems. And to all of you, thanks for watching. WXTV, your online source for weatherization information, techniques, and expert advice.